In this episode of the Back in Engineering Show, I'd like to talk about certificates. You know, those things that show up when you click on the padlock uh, icon on your browser when you visit a secure website. And uh, mainly what I'd like to talk about is why do they exist and the problems that they introduce uh, as a result, specifically to the revocation of a certificate when it goes bad you know certificates can go bad because the private key can get leaked or the certificate authority itself becomes shady or doesn't follow the rules anymore and we want to mark all its certificates as bad so we went we kind of fell into a pit of this problem of revocation and we try to solve it with many many solutions but most of them are are really hacky and and really just puts a lot of stress in both the front end engineering and the back end engineering community so i'd like to talk about all that right so i'll have some timestamp for you guys to jump into effectively i'll be mentioning a certificate uh, revocation list i'll i'll mention uh authority revocation list i'll mention uh, ocsp uh, protocol online certificate status protocol and then i'll mention the online certificate status protocol stapling and then i'll finally mention what is really the best solution when it comes to uh, protecting and having a fully secure certificate and what does that mean how about we jump into it welcome to the back in engineering show with your host hussein Nelson. and this is the long form content show uh, that is also a podcast that you can listen to on apple Podcasts, sort of spotify google play all that jazz go to hosseinnasa.com slash podcast to listen and make sure to rate the show thank you so much and uh, there will be some time stamp guides uh, both in the show notes and on youtube if you're watching on youtube you can jump into the interesting part of the video why do we need certificates the main reason to keep the to keep from going into kind of the weeds or the details is the problem with connection management if i want to connect from a client to a server we use the ip address and the port to connect to an application right however these these two pair is not enough to establish that we are absolutely sure that we're connected to this particular server because someone in the middle could be looking out at our packets right and this is regardless whether there are encryption or not because if if there is a request which transformed to a bunch of tcp segments in case of tcp which goes into a bunch of ip packets all this packets go through your router which goes through your router's isp which goes through many 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 other routers in the internet so they pass through many many hops until it reaches the final destination how can you make sure that nobody tampered with your data right how can you make sure that when a response came back no one actually changed it right you can't and the reason is this lack of identity we don't we don't know that this response that we have received is actually from the original server or not from someone who did a man in the middle attack using uh arp poisoning in a shady starbucks wi-fi or a hotel guest right you can't know that and this also includes encryption even even if you do encrypt the content the request the first request to establish the encryption using tls the tls hello is unencrypted most of the time there are solutions to do the an encrypted client hello that might solve some of this but still not 100 percent but yeah the request to encrypt goes through the attacker right so the attacker can just say okay i'll just respond back to you with an with an encryption response as effectively create two channels two encryption channels right so i'm going to terminate your encryption and then i'll serve you back with my own diffie element parameters effectively terminating the encryption and looking at everything so if you send me an encrypted request i'll decrypt it and then send it back 
encrypted to the backend server and the server doesn't know that the client is the one connected right it just it just knows that oh, someone is requesting this information it doesn't know the identities this this goes back to both the client and the server we don't know the identities so what is the best way to introduce identities effectively authentication i want to know who i'm connected to what is something that the server or the client only have and no one else have private key public key infrastructure so if you generate a pair dedicated for you on the server a private public key you can encrypt with the private key and only the public key can decrypt it and vice versa as well you can sign something with a private key and you can verify it with the public key the private key is kept secure the public key can be public obviously and this is the trick when you use private public key infrastructure the problem is kind of solved now let's use the private key as a way to establish the communication so now hey this this is a good thing let's let's do the same thing again so when i send you a message right i have your public i have the service public key here and then i'll send a message so when the server responds before it responds it adds a padding digital signature to the message saying hey by the way i'm gonna encrypt this thing that i'm about to send you with my own private key nobody else have it but my public key will be able to decrypt it right so if the attacker receives this is oh it cannot do anything about it it can try to change the data but now the data doesn't match the signature it will and it cannot create its own signature because if it creates a new signature it needs the private key which it doesn't have so now it passes back this way it passes back all the way to the client and the client will take the public key and then d uh, verifies that the data is untampered but there's a big problem with that how does the client know the public key of the server you probably already asked this question while you're listening to this <laughs> the problem is they can't they have to be delivered right so how the moment you deliver the public key in the same message the attacker can just grab it and change it right because this the client doesn't know that this public key belongs to the server we have the same problem again we're in the same loop how do i know that this public key belongs to the server there is no link right so the, then the then this becomes a problem so how do i deliver the public key that is me to the client so that they know this is actually me meet certificate so the, the the basic gist of certificate is uh, the the server generates this private and public key they take the public key put it in the certificate and then signs it with a lot of other metadata like the domain and stuff like that and then signs this public key with its own private key and creates a signature right and then they ship this information right but you might say I'm saying that's that's just dump that's the same exact thing that you just said because the certificate now hey uh, the attacker can do the exact same thing right the, cer the certificate itself they can take it oh it's a certificate the public key is signed boohoo i'm gonna generate a new certificate i'm gonna put my own private key here and i'm gonna self-sign it just like the server did with the private key and i'm going to ship it to the client the client doesn't know that the certificate is from the server or from the attacker so what do we do meet certificate authorities we need someone third party to trust <sighs> unfortunately we need a third party certificate authorities are, are are entities that are trusted and so the server negotiates with the certificate authority and says okay here uh, here's my certificate with the public key in it hey i want you to very i want you to to kind of what is this put your stamp on it so the certificate authority does exactly the same thing it has its own private key and the public key and it signs the certificate right from the server which has the server public key with its own private key and now you need a way to trust the certificate authority now there is a something higher than the certificate authority called the root certificate and the root certificate does exactly the same thing with the certificate authority up until that's it the root certificate is globally trusted 
and it's self-signed nobody trusts nobody signs the road certificate it's, it signs itself but you might say how do i trust this self-signed certificate road certificate go to your computer you'll see a list of all trusted road certificates can you trust them no you cannot <laughs> no you cannot because if you ship a laptop from china it will be shipped with some shady road certificate how do you know what's good or not you're at the mercy of whatever, whomever these people decided to decide that these root certificates are trusted. You cannot trust anything. But let's say, I'm being facetious. Is that what facetious? facetious? Yeah, I think that's the right word. But you get my point, right? Let's assume we trust whoever the Windows who installed the operating system or Linux who installed the operating system with this list of root certificate. And we say, okay, we trust these guys. Okay. And now when, when, when this certificate travels, which is signed, it has a chain of trust, right? It will travel and the attacker cannot do anything about it because even if it did create its own public key and private key, it needs a certificate authority to sign it, which nobody will sign because they know you're an attacker. They know you're not facebook.com. They know you're not google.com right? And there's a way to kind of uh, how you might say, how do I generate this certificate there is a dns way the dns way to generate certificate and there is other ways as well but yeah so this this looks fine this looks great right right what's what's the problem with this all of a sudden now the client and server trust each other and the client can do something like that right the client can also provide a certificate called a client certificate so the server trusts the client right if you want a mutual TLS, MTLS, that's what they call it. If you want both uh, identity, if you want to trust, this is this is good for microservices specifically in the cloud. You you don't want just to trust the server, you want to also trust the client effectively. This Only these clients can connect to me as a server. All right, we talked about why we need certificates, why they're good, right? They solve a problem that we genuinely have. Kind of, because certificates just like uh, yogurt they go bad and what does that does this that mean Hussein do you mean the certificate expires yeah they have an expiry date like why don't you put uh, an unlimited certificate with not expiry <laughs> well you cannot do that because if the private key uh, are you guaranteed that the private key is gonna last forever what if the server got hacked and the private key got leaked well, that's a problem right why is this a problem i'm saying it's a problem because if the private key is leaked and the attacker got access to the private key they can effectively keep the certificate they don't need to change the certificate yeah keep the certificate as is they have the private key all this message that is included with the certificate they can change it all over together they can put their own message they can put put their own defilement parameter they can put anything and then sign it with the server private queue because they have it and this client will say oh let me verify this message the message is sure the private the message says hey this i must be talking to the server because no one else have the private key except the server bad so private key leaking is a problem so we need to put an expiry date so there we put an expiry date it used to be three years we shorten it to at least one year uh let's encrypt put it i believe to three uh three months i believe by default shorter the better what if your one year or three year certificate didn't expire but your private key got leaked before it expired all of a sudden the client cannot refuse this certificate they, they look good they didn't expire but they are bad right you need to revoke these certificates and people found a problem with that because how, how do you tell that this certificate is now revoked right even the server itself so the server itself can just update it but most servers don't know that their their private key is actually lead so so how does the client now trust because that's the client is the victim in this case so the client needs a way 
to know that the certificate is, is revoked. The first solution that people came under, I think, just shot of the dark. Let's build a list. Let's build a list of and all the certificate uh, revocation list. We're going to call it CLR. Certificate revocation list. CRL. It's a list of all the revoked certificates. And it turns out to be a huge list because it turns out a lot of certificates are being revoked and not just because private keys are being leaked and i don't know if you heard about this attack that was called uh, this this flaw in OpenSSL, which is this this library that helps in this crypto stuff right the cryptographic uh, algorithm right and then generate these tls libraries and functions uh, it had a problem called heartbleed where uh, attackers were able to read the memory of the server and what's in the memory of the server precious beautiful things including the private key and not only just private keys you want to revoke the certificates because of private keys are leaked but certificate authorities are run by people and people are inherently some people are bad some people are malicious so certificate authorities go back so we need to a way to not trust certificates generated by bad certificate authorities all right or certificate authorities are run by human human make mistakes so uh, oh i accidentally uh, uh, created a certificate for someone took that claim to be google.com accidentally well we know google.com are not this shady person living in the middle of nowhere uh, I need to revoke that. So mistakes happen, so you need to revoke it. So people created this idea of certificate revocation list. It's a huge list. So the client need to download this list and every TLS session, right? I, I didn't mention that, but certificates are served with the TLS server hello. The server responds back with that so every ts session i have to check this huge list so now my 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 stuff is slow right and people now uh needed not only and they found out this this is growing huge and if a certificate authority turns out to be bad all their certificate thousands and thousands and millions of certificates now are also bad what do you do you generate these fine revocation list entries for every certificate that this shady certificate authority like i was was it called superfish i believe the certificate authority diginotar so they came up with another list called uh, the authority certificate uh, revocation list so another list just for the certificate authorities we know it's this solution didn't work didn't scale right because of this problems like i don't want to search this huge list and i don't, I don't want to consume bandwidth and then how do i update my list it's like this this list keeps growing by by the minute so i have to download the client have to download this list and check yeah okay so how do we solve this problem a new solution that was proposed and people said okay let's put this list on the server let's let the client ping ask the um, centralized server if this certificate that i just requested from a server a third party server might, might i tell you let's ask this middle server third party uh, if this thing is revoked so now this is list bandwidth but it's more efficient bandwidth efficient and this is called the online certificate status protocol so there's a server that manages the state right of and we, you you the client will ask hey um i just visited google.com and they gave me uh this certificate can you check if it's revoked all right they you create an ocsp request and they ask this third party hey can you check this report hey i just visited uh, reddit.com can you check if this certificate is revoked? hey i just visited uh, uh, facebook.com is this certificate revoked hey i just visited um, hussein is this visit is, is this certificate revoked uh, 
you get the idea. What, what do you notice now? I just visited uh, nastygrandmas.com. Can you check the certificate? <laughs> I, don't, I, just, I, I try to come up with the name. Can you check if the certificate is is a, is revoked? Like, what do you, what do you notice? That your entire history of uh, of of what website you visited are in this third party. <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose what is the privacy you don't have a privacy anymore this third party have a log of everything effectively mm, that's not good so the ocsp the online certificate status protocol people didn't like it because of this privacy so the so people invented a new thing called ocsp stapling what is that so instead of the client doing the instead of the client doing the ocsp request let the server do the ocsp request this way the ocsp request let the server do it and let it let it attach the ocsp the status of the revocation of its certificate as a proof that it wasn't uh, it wasn't revoked in the tls uh, response and let his response back to us so this way i know that oh not only i got a certificate i also got a proof that it was stapled it is stable literally st staple it with a proof that it has not been revoked and uh, this looks fine this is nice but now how does the server know when to do this does it do does it do it synchronously if it does it synchronously, that means with the TLS hello, the server will pause because wait, let me do, let me, let me, before I give you the certificate, you asked for the OCSP uh, stapling. Okay, let me check with this third party. I'll give you the response. Okay, the, it wasn't revoked. Attach it and send it back. That slows down things, definitely, right? Because now the backend has to do this extra work right that, that kind of sucks the back end has to do work it was the front end now the back end has to do it and that slows down the connection and that's definitely is going to slow down connection establishment and it's not good so people now do it asynchronously right so when the client asked for an ocsp stapling tls extension because that's what it is it will asynchronously always do it on the back end and have it ready right uh, and 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 when the when a customer or when a client asks for it it will attach it to the tls server hello and then ship it back to the to the client right and then this seems to be solving a problem yeah so we don't have this uh delay anymore but still you're asking the, the server first of all the server has to do more work that's CPU, that's memory, that's bandwidth. And more all, you're asking me the server to be connected to the internet. What? I don't want to server my server. To, why do we need to connect to the internet? My server is a pri this is a private thing. The whole my backend is hidden behind a firewall. I don't want to expose it to the internet. You might say, why do you what, what are you talking about? What, what internet? Well, where is this OCSP stabling thing? It's somewhere on the third party in the internet, right? You need to acquire this list, right? You have to open the port. You see the complexity where we're going. Why? Because of the certificate. So now, now you might say, Hussein, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run my own OCSP stapling server internally, right? You can, and people do that. A lot of a lot of you guys actually are cloud experts, right? You might have running your own certificate servers, and you don't really need all that crap, right? You're you're all internal. The whole thing is internal for microservices. You really, it's not really public. But when it's public, then it's then you get into the situation where the public internet needs to know about this thing. The, right uh, the revocation list but yeah it gets just more complicated as you as you see so what's really the solution hussein well i think everyone agrees in the browser community that 
You need shorter certificates, man. I mean, Cloudflare is, is really the best when it comes to this thing. Cloudflare generates like two weeks certificates. That's it. L recycle your private key all the time. Because these things, the private key itself changes. Uh, keep it changing. Sure. Because if you change your private key, not only you, you don't run into this revocation problem as often, because you don't really need to check for revocations. Like, who, who's going to get hacked in two weeks? Right? I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but the chances that it can happen, very unlikely, right? And, and plus, uh, you don't get the problem with uh, forward, uh, what is it called? Uh, you don't get the problem with forward secrecy. Right when it comes to certain sessions, I know the TLS one point three doesn't have forward secrecy because it generates uh, ephemeral symmetric keys. Right now, it probably doesn't matter really for because uh, the the TLS one point three has the it's fully uh, supports forward secrecy, so uh, full forward secrecy, I, I believe it's called. So uh, even if you if you change your private key, if you don't change your private key, it, it generates ephemeral. Uh, symmetric keys all the time so uh, uh, unlike rsa right rsa the problem with rsa is uses the private key as a, a vehicle to generate the symmetric keys which causes obviously problems because once the private key is leaked not only you have access to the future but also the past conversation if you ever recorded them all right guys uh, that that's all for me really just keep your certificates short that's encrypt of flair things that the shorter the better and then be pragmatic when it comes to this revocation things because uh, if you enable this i mean iis have these these all these options you can disable or enable ocsp uh, status protocol stapling you can have it enabled or disabled it, it's up to you and genx uh, ha proxy all these have this option to enable or disable ocsp stapling based on that but now I think now that you know the fundamentals and the reasoning behind all of this crap, you you get to make your own choice. At least you understand what's going on, at least. Thank you so much for listening slash watching. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.